Hello, welcome to the Acid Flux Base Mapping tutorial. For this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you basically how to map, the met methods of mapping, and all the tools that you might need. Right, I'm going to be doing this mapping tutorial on Legacy Ultimate Universe 2.0. Uh, most of the stuff featured in this mapping uh, editor won't be available in most other games, since there are particular features in this uh, total mod that you won't find in other ones. So basically I'm going to open up Legacy in windowed mode for the sake of this video although you might want to open it in full mode. Might take a couple of minutes to load up. There we go. issue with Legacy is that it takes ages to load up if you've just restarted your computer. If you run it twice without uh, restarting it in between, the second time it will run it will be much faster. So we'll cut through all of these. And we are faced with the main menu. To get to the map editor we go to extras, we click on map editor and you've got this option here. Now in this box you can put in any map name that exists in the soul or any of the uh, the child folders in the soul folder in your legacy directory. However, every name, so let's put in HH, must be followed by the .soul file extension. Otherwise you'll get an access violation. But we're going to start a new map. So we go onto map editor here and we are faced with a loading screen and then an empty map. All you can see is a camera in the middle, but we'll come to the cameras in a minute. So if I zoom out by scrolling out on my uh, mouse, I can press G to show me a massive grid. That's a 3D grid. Pressing G again will show me a 2D grid. And pressing G, G a third time, I see both. Which is quite handy when you want to know how 3D or how wide your map is, and so on and so forth. Now if we go up to here, we've got a tool called the object list and this shows all the tools that will be or all the objects that will be in your map and that will follow this list down here we'll get rid of that you've also got map dialog and this shows you basically the base settings of your map you've got the width and the height which are the width and height of the dimensions you can see from the default view it doesn't show depth because uh, that's a default setting I believe Number of players, which can go up to 8, but we'll put it for simplicity at 4. These are what type of map it's going to be. We're going to make this a simple skirmish map, although for missions, which are a bit more complex, you can put in campaign mission or planet conqueror, which change the uh, base settings of the actual map, so it's a bit more, um, a bit more adept to the type of game that you want to play. And you can put in mission title. I'm going to call this... I've already got a map called Testron. We'll call this Demian. Nice and simple. And we'll put a red, green, yellow background on it. I think that's what it stands for anyway, I'm not really sure. Okay, so that's the main setting set up. So we press OK. And it should change it to that. So you've got a new background. Now we're going to get down to some of the map objects. Now when you click on map objects you've got all of these um, options to pick from. You've got moons, so you can chuck a moon there and say there. You can go back to planets and these are different types of planets. If you know you're, uh, you're trekking stuff then you know that M is the one you can live on and there are various, various others you can live on and so on. But we'll pick a class K desert. Myself I don't really know all the class of planets. I know that M you can actually live on and so on so forth. Big nebulas are pretty important in the map. I normally make mine really really big but so they don't take up much power on your computer so not too laggy. What I'm going to do here is make a decent sized nebula using one of these stock nebulas. Now to make it really big you've got the size thing down here. 
and when you put in say 4,000 by 4,000 by 9,000 actually we'll make that a bit more realistic, 5,000 um, when you press apply to nebula without changing any of the other settings it will take forever to load and it will be pretty big in fact if you make the size big enough it will actually crash your game so I'm going to run you through the methods to make a really sort of faint subtle nebula and then I'll run through a really thick sort of um, a strong nebula so to make this quite big and quite responsive on your computer we're going to change this to 1.5 this is basically the density of each blob and each blob consists of different sized flats so if we zoom in which I can't at the moment don't know why Oh. so if I zoom in to here you can see each blob and the splats which are inside it so if I change this to 1.5 some of those blobs disappear because there's less blobs in a certain area and um, more blobs in a certain area means it's more dense, less means it's less dense so we've reduced the density blob average size we'll change this to 2000, we'll change the size again in a minute because I didn't apply it to the other one and now it's pretty much disappeared into one blob and all that, that single blob has loads of splats in it, you can see it a bit more clear, clearly now we're going to make the splats considerably bigger because more splats can really reduce your gameplay we're going to reduce lighting lighting can also affect gameplay, more lighting means that it takes longer to load for some reason I'm not really sure, I'm not really too uh, up to scratch on the whole scripting what this and that means oh the phone's going, I'll ignore it for now now we're going to make this sort of a bluey sort of nebula so you've got the primary colour, that's going to be red uh, green and blue and it's the same down here, red, green and blue now to make your nebula a bit more dip, uh, add a bit more depth to your nebula and have, have like a uh, dual colours in it, you can put fill in both of these. So we're going to make this one 107, 157. So it's going to be mostly blue, and we're going to add a little bit of yellow in there. Now this one we're going to make pretty much equal 120, 120 for the red and blue. So it's going to be purple, and this one we're going to have as 50, which will add some other colour to it. Now we're going to increase the size, 9000, 9000 by 4000, and hopefully it shouldn't take too long to load since we've got quite a large sort of splat size in there, which means less splats and bigger blob sizes, which means less blobs, bigger blobs. So we're going to apply that to Nebula, and there we go. It loads pretty much instantly. We've got a nice purple, very subtle Nebula there. However, I think I can make it a bit more. Um, noticeable without reducing gameplay. So what I'm going to do is make this 1.9 so we've got a few more blobs in that uh, area. I'm going to increase this to 1.6 which will reduce gameplay a little bit and I'm going to increase this to 7. I'm going to apply. A bit more loading this time but it's still very responsive on my computer and that seems to be running nicely. So I click off that we've got a nebula. Now to move your nebula around and to do all sorts with it you can click on the top of the orange thing or if you go out here you can see when you've got it in your uh, in your perspective when it shines green at the corners up there and orange so now I can move it around however if it's just green which you can get at some point I don't know uh, it won't move around so you've got it selected here now to rotate it around at different angles you need to right click on it so you've got it selected here now to rotate it around at different angles you need to right click on it and simply move it around like that now since my nebula is wider and higher than it is deeper I'm going to keep it on a pretty much horizontal plane and there we go that's the nebula added now to add slightly more stronger nebulas say this red one here uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now basically this nebula here looks pretty ugly. Uh, it's very blotchy and stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the colour a little bit more um, map friendly or eye friendly. You don't really want to be looking that 
uh, that's for too long. So now we've got a bit more of a purple one, which is nice. We'll add a bit more red to it. Very nice. And uh, that's quite a thick nebula now. And we're going to increase the splat density. This is a bit stronger. And we're going to increase.